He in a lab. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, first things first. Abu Sheni, Abu Tsonga. Um, greetings, everyone. I really do appreciate you know um, you swimming by this place and really becoming part of the conversation, right? So by all means, go crazy with the likes and the comments and you know those kind of things, man. I really appreciate and love hearing from you. So today I want to quickly touch on seventh leadership. Two words, seventh leadership. Um, let's get into the definition quickly. So what is a seventh, or connotations at least, that I can think of? For me, a seventh is a caregiver. You know, it's someone that looks after uh, someone else's property. Whether it's a house, if you think about a butler as an example, you know, um, that's pretty much the picture I have of a seventh. Um, they don't necessarily own what they're looking after, but they're looking after it because they've been placed in the space to actually do exactly that, right? Um, and, and that leads me then to the next word, which is leadership. Leadership is about people. So a servant leader, it's someone who's actually serving the people or serving the master by serving the people. So, so, so that's what it's about, servant leadership. And we'll get into the ins and outs of that just now. Um, the origins, or, 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 or someone who articulated this very well, it's, um, it's a gentleman by the name Robert K. Greenleaf. In the 1970s, uh, th this guy, um, after looking at multiple companies, over 40 years, I think it is, or is it 40 companies? I don't know, check it out. Anyway, um, he, he concluded this study um, of seventh leadership, and he actually titled, titled it, The Seventh as a Leader. That's interesting to me, you know? Not the leader as a seventh, the seventh as a leader. And that's exactly his point. He was saying, first prioritize being a servant. If you're a leader, the first priority is being a servant. Interesting. So um, we're going to look at this in two contexts. One, in corporate or business, um, whether you're owning that business or you work in that business, right? Um, and that's important because a third of our lives is spent in that space. I mean, a third of your life is a lot of time. So we'll, we'll look at that context. And the second context, um, which really I res or resonates with me, it's the spirituality context. And why is that? Well, my introduction into servanthood or servant leadership was actually in Christianity. I'm a Christian by faith. So we'll actually borrow from both worlds. Um, but the example that I will use to lend this, it's actually from, that, from my background, okay? Um, so in corporate, um, I've had the pleasure of by the way, um, um, facilitating this kind of conversation uh, around servant leadership, it was, it was an amazing experience, hence it's close to my heart. But uh, secondly as well, like many of, of you, um, I, 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 I have served as a leader or in position of authority as a manager, and I've also been in, in a space where I was accountable to managers or leaders, right? Uh, by the way, management versus leadership, two different concepts which we can touch on maybe in a, in a, in a different talk. Uh, management versus leadership, two different things. Okay, cool. So um, I guess I'm saying that to say it's very much close to my heart and I will borrow from my experiences with the hope, of course, that you may connect with one or two of them um, in your world as well. Because really this is a conversation that I would really, really like for all of us to have and not just, you know, me or the few um, that are around me. Seventh leadership. Okay, cool. Um, so we spoke of, of Greenleaf and his perspective around seventh leadership. We spoke of the two contexts that actually will use to actually touch on this subject. So um, let's summarize Greenleaf. He, he, he says authoritar authoritarian <laughs> type of leadership is ineffective. Ineffective in that, um, you know, uh, people cannot necessarily function under dictatorships you know, leaders who dictate policy and procedures and all sorts of things. It kills morale and um, as a consequence, performance is also then, you know, downgraded, so to speak. Uh, people don't live up to their, to, their, to their potential, I guess. So, yeah, that, that's his position. So he says, first prioritize being a servant. Approach people in that light and in that heart. And, um, yeah, that's what will actually make all the difference. Cool. So let's then talk about 
um, the spiritual side of things. So the word leader in, in Christianity is equivalent to servant. Leader is a servant. Okay. Hence the term servant of God. I'm sure you would have you would be familiar with that one. You know? Um yeah. Um so so that's that's what a leader is. A leader is a servant. So all pastors are actually servants, not so much to the people, but to the master. They serve the master by what? Serving the people or looking after the people in, in a service orientated way, right? And I'll explain just now what that looks like. Um and then a third component in terms of how then the Bible teaches about servanthood is really looking at the picture of a shepherd. Um, and, and when I say shepherd, immediately you must think Christ as a shepherd, you know, shepherding the flock or the church. Um, but also I think a, 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 an example that I would actually focus on and look at is David. Because David as a young man was actually a shepherd. I'll give you some examples just now in terms of what he did as a shepherd. So, there are five elements or five things that we'll touch on um, that you need to actually do if you are to be a servant leader. Number one, you need to be with your people. Number two, you need to get to know your people. Three, you need to love your people. Four, you need to serve your people. And I guess five would be leading your people, right? So let's break each and every one of those down quickly. So. What does it mean to be with your people? It means exactly that. Be with your people. That be, I know, it talks to mindfulness for those who are, who are into mindfulness, you know, being present. So be with your people. Be amongst your people. Um, you know, um, Christ was found always to be amongst the twelve or the three, but he was amongst his people. Right? In the book of Revelations, as an example, um, we see him, the Bible says he's walking amongst the seven candlesticks, which is another symbol or, 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 or yeah, a meaning of a church. You know, so he was really there. Okay? And um, if you think about the shepherd and David, um, the reason why, uh, you know, shepherds sort of fall so, 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 connected I guess fall deep in love with the sheep is because they are always with them in the case of David for instance um, even when a time came for his visitation when he was about you know when he was about to be anointed to be king um, the prophet came to his house and David was not at his house he was in the wilderness he was found to be with his sheep right so he always spent time with them they had to go find him there and then bring him back and then that's how then he got his blessing or anointing. So be with your people. You cannot lead without being with your people. Um, whatever that means for you. Uh, in this in these days, I know that may be remote, um, being with your people. But be with your people. You know what I mean? Be amongst your people. That's when you get to see them. That's when you get to know them, which leads me to my second point. Um, being with your people will lead you to know your people. Because you observe what they're doing right, what they're struggling with, what their strengths are, you know, weaknesses. You're able to then see all of this that you would otherwise not see. Because, you know, if you try and lead without being with your people or getting to know your people, you just say, they are paid to do this, they must do it, I want results. Basically, you're not a leader. You are, you are you, when you do that, by the way, uh, you, you are a, 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 a glorified administrator in in a sense that you collect notes of what they've done and then you take it forward wherever you need to take it a leader you be you are with your people you get to know them and you get to fix issues with them and I guess that leads me then to the next one which is love your people you know because you cannot not love or fall in love with people that you are around right love can be developed in that sense if we spend time together we can fall in love again and again again and again and maybe that's a recipe for marriages spend time together bro <laughs> that's how you fall in love um I, I don't understand this whole break stories but that's another uh, conversation for another time um what i'm saying around love is you know you spend time with your people you are you are with them you get to know them and you get to love them as well because you know, understand what breaks them what makes them where you can actually help them that's how they love you by the way when they see you actually helping and struggling with them in whatever they're struggling with okay number four 
Serve your people. Service, service, service. That's what servant leadership is about. When you wake up in the morning, if you pursue or want to be a servant leader, the word that comes to mind is, who can I serve today? Okay, I know that's not a word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's about service, right? Serve your people. Identify what issues they're struggling with and fix those issues. You know, if your people are running, be there running with them. See that they're thirsty, get the water, give it to them so that they can keep running. I.e., I, I, they can keep doing the work, right? Um, if you see, for instance, in the run that there's, there's a rock there, they might actually, you know, stumble over that rock. Go in front, remove the rock so that they can continue to run. Serve your people, man. Be there. Be the one to give them what they need all the time. Anticipate what they need. Why? Or how can you anticipate? Because you know them, remember? Be with your people. Get to know your people. Love your people. Serve your people. The final one is, of course, to lead. Lead your people. You cannot um, be a servant leader or any leader for that matter, you know, who does not lead. I mean, really? Lead? <laughs> in Israel or old Israel, um, the shepherd actually used to be in the front of the sheep. He would call and they would hear his voice and follow him. My people know my voice or my sheep or my flock know my voice, right? So be in front. Be the first to do it, you know. And then they will follow. Lead. Show people how to do what needs to be done. And by the way, the leading also leads me to individual or situational leadership. Because we are not all skilled the same. We, we, our personalities are different. Likewise, it is with your people. You know, they're not the same. So understand where they are, right? And help them accordingly. Oh, by the way, in, in the example that David, so first I said he was with his sheep, right? I gave you the example in terms of his visitation. He knew his sheep and they knew him. He knew which sheep, for instance, had a blemish, which one is likely to lead or go astray, so he would focus on that one and make sure it's collected. Um, he loved his sheep. That goes without saying. I mean, at some point, you know, he would put his life for his sheep. He laid it down on the line so that they can protect it. That's, that's, that's interesting. True story, um, he faced a lion, he faced a bear to protect his sheep. And by the way, when I say faced, I mean he actually killed these animals, wild animals, so that he can protect his sheep. That's what love does, man. It gives you power and strength. So, okay, he loved, <laughs> he loved his flock to a point where he was able actually to serve them in that way. Um, and I guess that talks to serving the sheep, right? Uh, in terms of leading them to right pastures, giving them water, etc., etc., and leading them there as well, you know. So, so you get the gist. Um, servant leadership is the only way to lead. I argue. I would take Greenleaf's position today and say, pursue or aspire or work at being a servant leader, whether you're in a position of leadership or not. You can influence people around you by helping them and by serving them. Thanks for listening. Um, really, really hope to hear from you. We cannot cover everything in one talk. But actually, if you have perspectives, by all means, drop a comment. Let me hear from you. Peace. <laughs>